Happy Sunday, YouTube. And uh, we have the beautiful Nala here with us again today. I'm sure a lot of you have been following her, so oh, good. She uh, was in a really bad place coming in. I mean, super, super just fearful of the world, not knowing how to really deal with life. And her owner was just really at, uh, okay, good girl. A complete loss is how to help her. And um, when she came in, oh, good. She even really, you know, had a hard time adjusting to our staff. We had to double noose her and go for like a nice long walk, even before, you know, she stopped taking shots at us on her first day here. So we've been doing just uh, routine training with her, crate training, uh, getting her on a proper diet and a good feeding schedule because she was very overweight. Uh, very, very long walks on a, okay, come, come, good girl. Very long walks on a retractable leash. And um, then we slowly and gradually started doing some obedience training with her and some e-collar work. So, one of the things that um, Nala definitely, come on, let's go. Yes, good, okay. One of the things she struggled with was resource guarding and possession, particularly with food. When there was food around, she would have a little bit of trouble dealing with that. And you know, that's common, not only with this breed, but a lot of shelter dogs, they come in with resource guarding issues because of their early beginnings. Um, and usually resource guarding, it's usually not just limited to food. It could be everything from space on the sofa to toys to a stick on the ground or a rock. So it's something that definitely has a genetic component to it for sure. So um, up to this point, you know, the relationship building process with, yes, good girl, with Nala and our staff was really, really critical. And um, now that she trusts us, because play was even completely out of the option, because any fast motion that you would make on her, she would either go to become aggressive and defensive, or completely shut down and, oh, let's go, no, come on. Yes, good, and not want to interact. So we're starting to do some play with her, because that's gonna be a really important part of being successful with her, because, you know, she walks on a leash now, she has obedience, but we want her to want to do it and have some fun because, you know, just going for a walk around the block once she goes home, Nala, come, that's good, is not going to be enough exercise or be fulfilling enough for this girl. So um, she's not to the point where she's comfortable to get tugging on this with me. And um, I've been kind of doing my introduction there. I'm going to get to playing with her a little bit. And what I just want here is her to kind of figure out the game. I want her engaged with me to learn that it's exciting. And then when I have some focus on the toy, I'm going to give it a little bit of a throw. And if she interacts with it, I'm going to give her a whole bunch of breaks. And, you know, hopefully she'll start getting more comfortable getting a grip on it and then we can have a little bit of a tug game. I would love for her to learn how to play a game of fetch. It'll be so beneficial for her. So when, when we're dealing with a dog that comes in with uh, not much of a baseline of any obedience, and we have a behavior, good girl, or uh, a fear issue that we're contending with, these things take time, there's not quick fixes. Even the best trainer of the world can't change genetics, but this is a process, it, okay, it definitely cannot be rushed. You start hammering these guys right away with tools, that's not gonna help them solve anything because they don't, oh good, they don't even have an expectation of what it is they're supposed to be doing in the first place. So, you know, we're in it here with uh, Nala for the long run. And um, we're gonna keep her here as long as it takes to get this right for her and her, her owner. There's gonna be a whole lot of follow-up involved in this because a board and train, guys, really is not worth anything if the skills aren't passed on to the owner. So, okay, um, the follow-up, very, very important. So if you're a good girl, if you're signing up for a board and train program, and okay, and it doesn't include, you know, visits, midterm or 
any sort of follow up, you want to use caution with that because it's just like I said, super critical that you know what you learn with the dog gets passed on to okay everyday life once they go home. So down. No, down. So we're gonna keep um okay. We're gonna keep working on this play thing and just slow introductions. We got okay. A little bit of an interaction with the toy is a great first step. And as her confidence grows, there you go, you see we get some pulling at it. And once she kind of becomes socialized with it more or less, she'll pick it up. Another really common thing too with dogs is they'll have really high toy drive with their own toys, but another dog's toy can be kind of distracting because, you know, just the scent alone, uh, the saliva and uh, the smell of the hair on there. But, um, Nala, come. No, come. Let's go. What are we doing? Let's go. Okay. Come. Yeah, there we go. Good. Good girl. All right. Can you give me a sit? No. Over here. You guys say goodbye. Sit. Yeah. Good. All right. Say goodbye to everyone, all right? You're doing really, really good. Okay. Go get your water. Come on. Good girl. All right, guys. We'll check in with everybody later.